Hey guys, Brian with WorkshopAddict.com. We're going to talk about some interesting tools today and I need you to have a little bit of an open mind while we go through them. Some of our favorite tools in the shop are the Milwaukee M12 ratchets. I'm sure if you guys have them, work on cars, tractors, boats, anything like that, you love these guys. We use them on a daily basis and can't live without them. On the same hand, we love all the different sizes of the Milwaukee impact wrenches. It's just simple. You need the small ones, you need the mid-size, the right tool for the job. We're not grabbing a huge tool and moving up. Now, Milwaukee came out with what they're calling an M12 fuel digital torque wrench, and these do have one key. So they make two models, a 3 8 model and a half inch model. 3 8 model is 2465-20, and the half inch model is 2466-20. It's interesting because these are a combination of these M12 ratchets and a digital torque wrench. Now when they came out with these, they blatantly said, this is not a mechanics tool. And to a good point, I will give them that. It is not gonna be for a lot of mechanics, but don't let Milwaukee pigeonhole you as to what you need and how you work on things. These are set out made for electricians is what I understand. I'm not an electrician, I don't see what they do, but they show these tools used inside of areas where they're just basically screwing down a fastener and attaching a wire, right? So they need to see how much torque that has. It gives the one key ability where they can save the torques and then list out this sheet, evidently turn them in maybe to the building owner or someone who's going to look over their job and say, look, all these are torqued, here's the exact specs. These tools can torque in a right or left hand thread, so clockwise or counterclockwise, no issue. They have a excellent rating as far as their certification and how close they will get their torques. It's at 3%. You, some people will say 2%. I'm gonna go with three on this because I go with the CCW. The CW is 2%. And you look at the accuracy of the paperwork inside, it is absolutely outstanding. And I can see where if you're taking your time with this tool, you can get it. It's a digital torque wrench. Us guys, mechanics, we're using the click style because it's fast, right? But when you're putting together a ratchet with a digital torque wrench, there's some interesting things that you can look on the inside for. And let's just come in close and take a look at what you see on the screen, what happens, what you can adjust, because it's pretty immense. Milwaukee's torque wrench will go to sleep if left for somewhere around a minute to a minute and a half. You just have to pull the trigger here and you can turn it back on. It turned back on thinking that I was actually tightening something up. If we want to go back home, we can just push an arrow button. You can see the last time I used it, it was set up for 90 foot pounds. This is the half inch model, so it'll go from 12 and a half foot pounds up to 150 foot pounds with the normal 20% of a torque wrench. So the bottom 20% is not gonna be as accurate. They're gonna claim their 3% accuracy from 20% of its usable value up to 100% of the total. Now the 3 8 inch model is going to give you 10 to 100 foot pounds. So if we wanted to move the 90 foot pounds, we could hit okay, push and hold the button, it'll move us through fairly quick. But realistically, if you're using this, you're gonna have some quick modes set up, which is something that I did not do at this point because I was just testing this. You could go through here and add, a, I think 15 different modes of different foot pounds that you wanted to have set. And inside that, there are a lot of different things that you can set up. Now this range at the bottom from zero to 10%, it's basically gonna give you your minimum torque. When you're holding this trigger back, you want this tool to come up to 0% or full torque. If we wanted to drop that down, you could see it would bring us up to a minimum of 84 and then we would hand tighten it with this unit from there. This section is a maximum. What's our over torque when this goes off? And this tool will turn red, it'll beep, it'll tell you, hey, you over torque something. And you can set that guy up to just about anything you'd like. And you can get very, very, very precise if you'd like to with the tool. It basically comes set up at 10%, which 
it's fair. I think that the screen on this is going to show you enough information. Uh, if you need to see the red over torque, I can see where it's at. Again, I'm not an electrician or I'm not a guy that's into, I'm looking at the mechanics of it. And to me, I would read the screen and look at it each time. So that port doesn't really make a lot of usefulness in my shop. A lot of different modes that you can go through here. Again, you just add them in multiple places. Saved events, which would be using this key. You can save any of the torque values as we talked about. Very interesting for someone other probably than a mechanic. In your settings, you can go through the units, foot pounds, inch pounds, newton meters, kilograms per centimeter. That way you don't have to go through and test out anything. Your sound is basically what happens through here telling you the 40, 60, 80% and then full hit or over torque. You can change the what seems like a vibration but you really don't feel it. Screen brightness and display in language. Pretty simple rundown torque. If you want this to, with the trigger, take you to the complete, or if you want it to be set for 90%, it can be set anywhere. It just can't be set over 100, obviously. And then basically down here, you get into the certification in the firmware. These are updatable, and if you go in, my certification is not working. It says three of 5,000. Now, I did have an over torque. And I think once I did the over torque at three, it stopped counting everything I did after that because I never hit the OK button. So I'm going to guess here at 5,000, this tool is going to say, hey, you need to be recertified. There's a chance it could shut down. Uh, Milwaukee is doing their own certifications. They're guessing it's going to take about seven days for this tool to get certified. Should happen at once a year or that 5,000 mark. Now, most of these things are actually able to be done inside the OneKey app along with some other things inside OneKey. We're going to hit that later, but that's the basics of how this works. So why is Milwaukee saying not for mechanics or basically saying this is standard built for electricians? Totally get it because you have zero to 100 RPMs. A lot of people might want to use these for torquing tires, although it's a digital torque wrench. Most of us would use click style on tires. It doesn't have the foot pounds for anything that's going to be half ton truck and above. So you can hit your half ton truck at 140 if you're right in there, but then you're going to be down. So it is limited by this head. And you can see on the half inch model here, the head is larger than what the half inch model is on your normal ratchet. And I believe that the materials out here are what's stopping us at 150 foot pounds, at least that's per Milwaukee. So if we start getting a larger head, we start getting less uses and they thought this is the perfect place. 100 RPMs is very slow putting a lug nut on. 100 RPMs is very slow sometimes when you're even cranking down head studs or the actual bolts on heads. Sometimes you're gonna to wanna to get out something a little quicker, like an impact, start to get things tight and then move them around. Now, the difference of what I see, if you work in a machine shop or if you work in an area where you're building engines or if you're in assembly and you always are hitting these specific torques and you're using something similar to a ratchet like this and the speed's good, that's where I start to see where this could work because the difference of me holding on to, I guess the extended version 3 8 or this, if I have to get out a torque wrench, isn't that big of a deal, especially if I'm building the motor and I'm looking at digital specs. I can see and use this a lot easier. I have a lot less movement. So if there's injuries or shoulders or anything that's gonna happen with that, this works out a lot better but it's gonna come down to your style. Are you working on something that is going to want or need a tool that is not only specific in use, but also fairly expensive? Uh, the bare tool on this is gonna be 599 in the kit with two batteries, which is the CP 2.0s is gonna be 799. So price is up there, but for that specific use, it works. So when we do heads on the tractor behind us and we start pulling things off on the motor, the oil pan, all those different things that do have torque values, I would use it. Why not, right? You know everything's right, but I'm gonna throw this out there. 
A lot of people don't torque things down to exactly what they are. If you go in and watch, I'm gonna say 80% of the tires that go on at a tire place. I'm not gonna name a specific one, but they will use an impact to snug everything up. We do the same thing, except I think 90% of the time those guys use the impact, slam some of those lugs on the car, and then you go back and they've used their torque wrench and they just check minimums. Did they hit the minimum? So they might be anywhere from 100 to 150, but they hit that minimum of 100. Uh, and I can test it on my sea -Doo trailer over here, just playing around with this torque wrench, trying to see where things are at. And that's where one was set at, I think 60, and another one I was trying to find the upper end of it, and that's when I used, found the over torque on this. I think it got to 111, and I still hadn't moved anything. That's what you're trying to kind of stop here with the ability of having this tool automatically bring you up to torque, and then you check it. It's cool, it's just not fast enough for a lot of people at this point. And I've heard that Milwaukee is actually working on some sort of solution to that. So it could be coming in the future. There's a lot here that you can use. Let's just quickly look at what the one key stuff looks like inside. We already have both of these tools inside our inventory. Uh, let's just take a quick look at the 3 8 And neither one is turned on at this point. We can connect a tool. It turned itself on automatically. The cool part is we can lock this tool so our friends and anyone else in there does not see it. We can allow this tool to blink to tell us which one is ours. The universal settings are basically what we went through inside the tool earlier. Again, you can lock the tool again, turn on the lights, sound, and all the other possible vibrations, the work light duration. Simple stuff, right? But what comes into effect here is your tool modes, which you can create a mode inside here and, and set your target that's required. If we wanted to put 90 foot-pounds in, no lower, upper is 10%, and then we'd enter a name and call this boat lugs just cause. Save, and then that tool will come up with our boat lugs, and then it would easily roll through, let us choose that off the quick settings. The mode library just shows us everything we have, and we can delete those and add those. I don't have any saved event history, but this is where if we push the save button, it would tell us everything that was there. We can group those, we can do different things, and it will download to the phone. Very nice. As far as the certification, this goes through the same thing. Uh, this certification here, too, is a little slow. I'm not sure why. I've probably got uh, 45 different tests on this one. Either way, it's telling me when my next date is, so it's going to want me to send that tool back once I hit those 5,000. It's very interesting to see what's inside, where the tool is, all this stuff that you can do with this, how you can track different items. I like the one key settings. I don't go in here all the time, but I can go in and set something up, set it to the way I want things, and then move it. You can see we just go through and, and have everything set. In fact, we have one guy that we've been tracking on our uh, tick, which is interesting because we've been watching him move around town and where he goes to see where the tick works and where it doesn't because it works off of Bluetooth. But one key has definitely been something that we've enjoyed. So the phone app, take it or leave it, love it or hate it, it's going to be what you use. I do not believe this is something that's going to make you pull out your phone all the time and I don't think one key was really set up for that. It's more of making the tool how you want it and if you need something that's going to cause you to change the settings. Most people would get by without it, but it is nice to have, especially with tracking. And depending on your tool, maybe like this one or a miter saw, if you're leaving it there, you can physically lock that tool out so no one else can use it, which can save you money on consumables or in case it was even stolen, kind of track these things around. There are ways around it. 
Obviously the one key battery or the one key stuff is powered by a little coin cell and also the cell here. But as far as tracking, if there was no battery in it, there's a little, uh, I think it's a 2032, CR2032 battery that is in here that will actually find other Bluetooth things. So if it was stolen and around another phone that had the Milwaukee one key app, you could find it. Interesting stuff, tons of information. Not a lot of showing, a lot of me talking. I apologize about that. I just don't have the use for it at this point in time until this engine's tore apart behind me and we start putting that back together with specific torque specs. There's not a lot around here going on in the winter that's going to deserve a digital torque wrench. So I hope this does help you out though if you're interested in dropping that amount of money on one of these tools. Gives you an idea of, hey, I am a mechanic I can see how it would work. It might not work for me, or it might work for me. I'm gonna give it a try. Now, as normal, these tools do come with uh, standard Milwaukee warranties, five year on the tool, three year on the battery. Check them out. I'm gonna leave a link to my blog post. Go to that blog post. I'll have some other information, uh, Milwaukee videos on how these things are used, give you a little more idea of what Milwaukee intended the purpose for. I think that's cool. Check that out. As always, give us a like, subscribe. We appreciate that. And as always, have a great day.